Um, just to kind of get ourselves back in the swing of things, uh, let's do number four, the one we finished up on last time. Um, since we already did it, it should be not too hard. Um, Maya, that, how, how, would you, how do we start out with this one? Okay. Good. Good. How do we know that that was true? One, seven. One, seven. <clears throat> Good. And what's next? Not C. Good. What do we write on the right side? One, seven. Good. Okay. Um, Jordan. What goes next? I don't know. Not B. And what do we write on the right side? sense in the first couple steps we're just simplifying out the parts of that conjunction and then one of the parts turns out to be useful to us so we've got the negation of the consequent of this conditional which gets us the negation of the antecedent which is what we wanted because that's the conclusion we're trying to get good um, all right let's go ahead and do number five then. said this before, but when you're working through one of these, there's kind of two different strategies that can help you. And one strategy is to start with the premises that you've got and say, what can I do with those? What do my rules allow me to do with those premises I already have? Another way you can think about these problems is look at your conclusion. See, that's what I'm trying to get and then think backwards from there to sort of where in my premises am I going to get my conclusion from? Where's the, where's the only spot C is, George? C, uh, three. Yeah, right here. So I know somehow I'm probably going to have to do something with that conclusion to get, or to with that premise three to get to my conclusion. Um, so, I mean, you may not have to use both of those strategies every time. Um, but if you find yourself getting stuck going one way, you can sort of switch to the other end of the puzzle and start working back from the conclusion or check back in with the premises and see what you can work forward from. Okay. Um, got any ideas about this one? Any, any thoughts about what step we should do? Yeah, there's a lot of lines, but I feel like we could just write C and then put C in so could we write C and put line three sim? Yeah. Okay. What other people think about that, um, disjunction line three? That's called a disjunction, right? Yep. So therefore, we know that either one of those. Uh, We'd well, have to say. So. I want to I want to make sure everyone else heard. So the suggestion is: Can we do simp on line three? Laura, what do you think? Can we do a simp on line three? Yes. Jake says yes. Yep. Laura says yes. We cannot do a simp on line three. What problem is this? This is number five on the street. Oh, then no. We're doing four. There, you're still doing four. No. Okay. Five. Yeah, five would be disjunctive religion for three and four. Is that right? So. We'll, we'll, we'll take a minute to see where uh, what we should do. The question at this point is just, is number four a good step? Can we do a simp on line three to get C? Jordan is saying no. Why? Do you know why? You cannot do that. I don't even understand that. I think it's, no, uh, I think it's because oh, I know, it doesn't I, I still it's saying A or C, but it's not yeah. saying not A. That's right. Um, so simp only works with conjunctions. Okay. So you can only do a simp when you have a dot. Um, if you have a disjunction, then you need 
that other rule that we have for disjunctions, the DS rule, and you're right that we would need not A to do a DS with line three to get C. That's what it would take, right? Um, one thing I like to do is um, write up by the conclusion sub goals and um, that bit of reasoning you did there, Zach, tells us one of our sub goals is going to be to get not A. Because if we had that, then we could get C. And that's what our conclusion is. Okay, Jake. You can get not A from going one and two in most codes. Good. So we can't get to C quite yet, but we can get to not A from one and two by modus tollens. Again, we had a Oh my god. We have the consequent of our conditional negated in line one, so that lets us conclude the antecedent negated from MT. That's how that works. Perfect. Okay. And then we're ready to get to C with DS on, it looks like it's going to have to be lines three and four. We've got a, uh, a disjunction. One of the disjuncts negated, so we can conclude that the other disjunct must be true. Okay, let's do number six. I don't even understand how to do this. Okay, fight me. Oh my god. Okay, let's do number six. Okay, let's see. I figured it out. It's just the answer. <laughs> I can just figure out what the answer is. I don't want to go through the steps. No, no, but I mean like... So, look, let me just comment on this. So Laura's making the point that you can kind of walk through it, right? You can say, look, so how did, you walk th how did you walk through it to get to the C? Um, because it... So you like maybe if it was, noticed that, yeah, if, right? Yeah, if it's not B. If then it's, it's A and not B, B, then it would if be... If A then C and it's A, so it's C. Yeah. Good. So... How do I really want to that? <laughs> so let's go through it. So the first part was picking up on this not B, right? So we're going to have to do a simplification to get that not B by itself. And then we can use that not B with line one. And what are we going to get from line three and line one? A therefore C. Good. A and C. And which rule is that? What? Which rule are we going to use with line one and line three? DS. Perfect. Wait, Steve. Yeah. You could also write out A as two and simplification. I I could. Yeah. And um, so I could have done that earlier. Yeah. I'm also going to have to do it now. Yeah. Um, so I'll get. Uh, a from 2 by simplification. And why did I need that now, Jake? Because now we can prove that C is correct because A is correct. Because now I've got a match there with the antecedent of that conditional. So I'm going to use line 4 and 5 and... Um, no, two, 2 and... No, yeah, 4 and 5 for you. Nick, which rule lets me use line 4 and 5 to get line 6? are MP, MT, DS, and SIP. Those are the only ones were used oh, and so on. That would be modus tollens. Close. Be modus it's the tollens. other modus Yay. ones. Um, so modus tollens is the one that um, is taking something away. It's hard to remember the difference between those because they sound so similar and they're in a foreign language. Um, but tollens, uh, uh, modus ponens is the mode of putting. Um, and if you want, you can just remember these acronyms as mode of putting and mode of taking. And putting is where you put forward the antecedent, and taking is 
or you um, give a negation of the of the consequent. Um, maybe that helps to remember. Uh, another way to help remember is um, think about which connectives are these rules for. So modus ponens is for the conditional. Modus, ponen, modus tollens is also for the conditional. How about ds? Which connective are you going to use for that one, Jake? The or statement. Yeah, the disjunction and uh, maya. How about for simplification? Which, uh, uh, which and. Uh, sorry, say that again? And. And, yeah, exactly, the conjunction. Perfect. Um, so when you're trying to think, which rule am I using? That's a, a helpful guide, too. If one of your premises is a conditional, then you know it's not DS or SIP that you're using. Okay. Um, so how's that feeling so far, doing some derivations like that? Like we just did a bunch of derivations. Um, do you guys have number 46? No. Yeah, I have a bunch of 46s. Let's see that. Do you have a 44? Fancy. Yes. Could I get some copies? Yeah. Can I get like five more copies? Is this one that you've ever sent to me? Or? Um, I've sent it to you because it's right here. Okay. Or it was in your stack, so it must have got you. Okay, yeah, 46. Okay, let me just give two to each table for now and we'll get more in a minute. save 46 for next time. So some other stuff I want to teach you about. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So uh, time for um, a more fun <laughs> lesson. Work. You're not going to have to do any more worksheets for us today. Oh, God. Um, so on my way to school here, uh, there's a road where I'm like going along. Is this like if there's one person on one railroad track, and then there's five people on the other one, and you can switch the, the levers, no. who are you going to kill? You know the trolley problem. Um, it's not that one, though. Um, Wait, is it like, why don't you just like switch it and like untie the person? Okay, so I'm going along this way. Okay. And I see a sign right here. Or how about you like break the tracks and put it right on the middle so the train just like flies and off? And here's what the sign says. It says, um, Don't die. Good luck. It says left turns only ahead. Oh, you, mean you can turn left ahead. Or people okay. turn left ahead. So that's my question. Does it mean that I can turn left ahead? Or does it mean that oh, there are left other people are going to turn left? Ahead. Ahead. No, it doesn't. Yeah. It would say what left do you guys turn think? Only. It could mean the current lane that you're in, the left lane turns ahead. Okay. Yeah. Left turns. It could mean that, but it seems like there are it could very well left. also mean that I have to watch out for maybe somebody's going to turn left in front of me, right? Mm -hmm. like, that'd be a reasonable thing. But that's like not about. the rules this of the road. You're supposed side. to wait for other people. <laughs> well, yeah, but left turns. what if like maybe. Oh. They some the person coming Canada. out here can't see very well, and like maybe there have been some accidents here from people making bad left turns. So they just want to warn you, watch out for somebody turning left. The sign would be facing you, be facing the people this way. The sign is facing you, it would be left turns or those two turns ahead. So you think it's t trying to tell me well, about this left turn? Your drawing is not three-dimensional. Which way is the sign facing? Um, it's facing me. I can see it going well, then this way. It would direction. be very pointless to put a sign that says left turns ahead to people. You can't see the sign. No, but, well, he's, but, saying, but he's saying it's other warning people that me are turning that these left. other people okay. might make a bad choice here, and I should watch out and not crash into them. Well, that's that. 
was the, was the road the actually this? Options. Was the road actually this? Were, were the it was not actually this straight. It's much more windy. This is on Richmond Steve. Beach Road is the sign. Were the things to the left, are they obscure? Are they um, hard to see? They're sort of hard to see. There's kind of a lot of trees around. Well, then there could be that there are left turns ahead. Maybe right. it's like so if you can't see where the street there's sign is. There's at least is. two options. Um, option one is like you can turn left ahead. That's like that you have these options. I feel like it's saying that the and left lane turns ahead. Like it ha they have to people, turn. Uh, yeah, I would say left turns only. Can turn uh, left. No, but it's like, but that's that's when you get there. This is like a warning. Like, so, right there. Um, I mean, no, I no, think no, no. this is like not no, a saying. very helpful sign, right? <laughs> like that's just it's very confusing. And then you are um, focused on driving and then yeah, you have a car accident because uh, of you're looking at the sign. So um, it's not a helpful sign, and the reason it's unhelpful is that there's at least two, maybe lots more, interpretations of what that means, right? And it doesn't really tell you which interpretation you should go with. Um, so, uh, in general, um, it's called ambiguity when you have an expression that could mean more than one thing and it's not clear yeah, which one it means. Um, I saw something that was like, like only 90s children's so It was like a big story about how like the person's name was 90s and they had a dog that the parents didn't know about. I don't know, it was really long and it was really confusing <laughs> and it was like only 90s children's no children know. That it is funny cute. when you read um, the whole there's, thing. There's lots of different kinds of ambiguity and this is a particular one. Um, the, it's, uh, there's a name for it. Um, it has to do with, uh, they're basically not giving you the whole sentence, right? They haven't told you that there are left turns ahead for you or for somebody else. Um, it's not clear sort of where the left turns fit into the whole sentence, the whole claim they're trying to make there. Um, I have a second example uh, for you um, of the same kind of thing. Um, suppose you see a sign that says logicians only. Logicians? A logician is someone who does logic. Uh, All of you are logicians a log now. A, lo a logician? A lo a lo what does that mean? Like, what are they trying to tell you if the sign says there logicians are only? Only people. Only if you're smart. <laughs> only if you're a logician you can go in here. Other, not right, so like if maybe you saw it on, a, on the storefront, then you would think only logicians are allowed to go in there. Um, or if you saw it like on the cover of a book, you might think maybe only logicians are allowed to read this book. Is there another thing for it? Um, I would think I want to go read it now to see one. Uh, okay, here's a related one. Um, suppose you see uh, two plates of cookies, and one of them says um, <laughs> chocolate <laughs> chips and if it says walnuts. raisins. I'm gonna die. <laughs> chocolate chips and raisin cookies. Like they're uh, not. And the other one says um, chocolate chips and raisins only. That means okay. there's walnuts in the other ones. So here's my question. It's a silly question. It has an obvious answer. Does this one mean that? There's only chocolate chips in the cookies, or does it mean that only chocolate chips are allowed to have the cookies? Only chocolate chips are allowed to have the cookies. <laughs> Why? <laughs> That's a good answer. Um, so I think it's like clear from the fact that I'm contrasting it with this one that it just it just means there's only chocolate chips in the cookies. Well, if you were someone from another dimension and chocolate chips and walnuts would walk around, that means that <laughs> sentient it, chocolate yes, chips. it would mean that yeah. only chocolate chips can eat it, because chocolate chips and walnuts could eat those cookies, but only chocolate chips can eat those cookies. Yeah, so I think even um, in 
this expression, this there's is the same chip privilege. <laughs> there's the same kind of ambiguity here, right? That it just doesn't tell you the whole sentence. Does that mean that there are only chocolate chips and no other ingredients in the or fillings in the cookie? Uh, we would infer it could just be chocolate chips on the plate. Could just be chocolate chips. Like it could just be a plate of chocolate chips, no cookies. By the way, there's only chocolate chips here, but then there's one raisin. <laughs> um, so I mean, in cases like this, I think there is that ambiguity between. Are you saying that only chocolate chips are in the cookies, or that only chocolate chips can have the cookies? Well, but we know how to resolve it in this case, right? Because we know what's going on. We're talking about the things that are in the cookies. Yep. Um. So um, ambiguity of this kind um, can be eliminated just by writing out your whole sentence, right? If you just if we just wrote out the whole sentence instead of shortening it, then we'd have a perfectly clear description, or at least more clear. Um, we take shortcuts, we lose some of the information. Um, I have um, some cookies. Uh, oh, what did you say? Oh, what did you say on the seat? Only Laura and uh, only, only Laura and cookies. Say logicians only. Ah. That means oh, there's no. logicians in the cookie. Like, is it not vegan then? <laughs> they are not vegan this cookies. Is cannibalism. Is cannibalism? They are, are not vegan cookies. Your coworkers do this. Does it make like us more logical? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, that's that's more logical. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll put one plate of cookies on each table. Welcome to have a cookie if you would like one. Thank you. Did you like the story? Yeah. No, that's funny. They are homemade. How come they got the pretty ones? <laughs> or is one plate prettier than the other? Uh, yeah, I don't get any sprinkles. <laughs> We're ethnic, and you guys have an advantage for cold lives. So. Thank you. This is where we go. Right. Thank you. Um, okay. So, uh,. I like the snowman though. When we want to make sure that we're being really clear, we're going to try to eliminate ambiguity where we can. Um, try to be as unambiguous as possible. Um, is there anybody uh, in this school who has the same name as somebody else? No, because it's spelled differently. I don't know one other name. Yeah. Who? What, what's the what's the name? That, that there's two of them in this. Well, there's Laura there's and Laura. Options. Mine's L A U R A, and this is L O R A. Okay. That bothers me. Laura who? Juliana. It's Wow, I've always said like, yeah, I'm always wrong. So sorry. So, this one's I think interesting because uh, if you hear the name Laura, you can't tell just from the word which one is being talked about, but if you see it, if you read it, then you can tell the difference. Is there anybody who, like, has exactly the same name, spelled the same as somebody else? Luke, 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 and Luke. There are a couple here. Lukes. <laughs> the new, the, the nurse we have now is named Nancy. It's really bothering me a lot. Ooh. Everybody keeps saying, Nurse Nancy, this and that, and people think they're talking about Well, you should say that. Nurse say, Nancy. Not me. Oh, oh, these two have the first name and they have the same first and last name. Zach. Um, yeah, well, yeah, what's your guys' last name? I forgot. <laughs> okay. He does not like our last name. Do you want the real one or the one they prefer to go by? So, he doesn't like our last name. I see. I'm fine with this. I'm kind of use my middle name as my last name now. I see. Our real last name is spelled H-U-A-N-G. It's pronounced Huang, and it translates to Yang in Chinese. <laughs> So, uh, if you have a, 
if you have a language where you have more than one person with the same name, then that's another kind of ambiguity, right? Where you got to kill them off. <laughs> if, somebody, if somebody starts talking about Luke, then you don't know for sure which person they're talking about. I think of my language. Um, and <laughs> one of the things that really, yeah, Lydia. I know someone who has the same last name as me. Yeah. My What's brother. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Um, that's my kind of joke. Uh, so having two having two things with the same name is a is another kind of ambiguity. And um, one of the things that really motivated the people who developed the language of logic that we've been using is they wanted to be as clear as possible. They wanted to be able to say exactly what they meant so that they could really carefully think about the logical relationship between those things they were saying. Um, so uh, when, you know, when we do a problem looking at a sentence like A horseshoe B, it's important, and actually it's a requirement of the language we're using that the letter A always picks out the same sentence. You can't have like two different sentences with the, with the same name letter A. It's not like English where you can have two people with the same name Luke. Um, not allowed to have two different sentences with the same name. Um, and I think that should make sense why that's important, that every time we talk about that sentence, we're always referring to the same one, and it never switches to be some different sentence. That would be annoying. Uh, there's some special issues with um, two of the connectives that we talk about in logic. And um, we already sort of touched on the issue with horseshoe, um, with the conditional, that if you have a conditional where the antecedent is false, then the conditional is automatically true. What? Yeah, because if they're both wrong, it's then not, it's not like a... It's not the case that... No, so, if I do not study, then I will pass. I'm going to light one of these on the um, it's like, Let me write up that truth table for you to remind you of how this works. Mm -hmm. So remember we said that when the antecedent's true and the consequence false, the conditional is true. When no, 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 the no, antecedent's no, true, true, true and true. consequence false, conditional is false. But then what about these bottom two cases? What do you say about a sentence like, um, uh, if the Ravens beat the Patriots, they're going to the playoffs, um, given that the Ravens lost yesterday? You're nice. Um, <laughs> sorry, I had to pick on Jake a little bit for that. Uh, <laughs> uh, nice. <laughs> oh no, it's sports. So, I mean, it's, it's a little bit unclear what to say in ordinary English about a sentence whose antecedent is false. What to say about a sentence like, if I'm sitting down right now, then I'm the king of Edmonds. I'm standing. If I'm sitting down, then I'm standing. Um, what if you're laying down? Because think about it. What happens if I'm sitting down? Well, we have no way to like check because I'm not sitting down. Sit down. <laughs> no, we can find out. Wait, so, um, so if I if I do not study, then I will pass my test. That's what it. So suppose you studied for the test, and then we wonder, if I don't study, will I pass the test? Yeah, and I don't study for my next test. And according to um, the logician's rules, the answer is always yes. Um, suppose Sorry? I do study. <laughs> suppose I do study. Um, I was told that if I didn't study, I would not pass. <laughs> um, well, These examples just aren't working. <laughs> no. The next one is if you don't study, then you don't fail. Or if you use things that are always true. Wait, these all don't go together at all. Like, 
if I if I don't study, then I will fail. Is true, and if I don't study, then I'll pass. Is also true. That's right. And if I do study, then I'll fail. Is not true. No. <laughs> it's possible though. So. So we're imagining the case where you did study, right? Mm -hmm. And did you and you passed? Yep. So then um, the sentence, if I study, then I fail, is going to be false because you studied and you didn't fail. If I study and oh. Um, so this should seem weird, right, that we count these things as true. Yeah. It should seem weird that we count those things as true. And um, here is the reason why. It comes back to the thing about left turns. Um, the ordinary English words if then are, I think, uh, to some extent, ambiguous. And they don't have a perfectly clear interpretation. And um, uh, here's like one big distinction we, we make that I think matters. Um, uh, if I am sitting um then I am the king. Steve you really want to be um, king, don't you? What's that? You, you really want to be the king. It's just a fun example. Um uh, if versus if I were sitting then I would So let me just read it again. If I am sitting, then I am the king, versus if I were sitting, then I would be the king. Do you know the difference? Yep. What? So I think that this one is definitely false. It's not true that if I were sitting, then I would be the king. It's not like I can just sit down and become king. Well, is this using correct, like, is this, because if, if, if I, Study, then I will pass. That so, um, I mean, ignoring for just a second at least what I told you about the way mm -hmm. conditional works in logic, this seems not true, yeah. right? That if I were sitting, then I would well, be the king. If, if, if the king, like, I don't know, is this in a world where if you sit down, you would become king? Or is this just. Yeah, I mean, it's, this one is unfortunately not a world where if I sit down, uh, it's a real bummer. Um, uh, this one, what, what do you guys think about this one? Once we've seen the difference between these two things, do you still think that one's false or think not so sure about that one anymore? Well, if you say it when you're sitting, then you can be the king of others. So, like, I'm going to say it right now. If I'm sitting, then I'm the king. So, there it's definitely false. But what if you say it while you're standing? Or what if I say it? There's no way to prove it, right? So that's the hard question, is if there's no way to prove whether it's true or false, one option is to say, um, well, that it's neither. It's unprovable. <laughs> um, there's um, a system of logic called intuitionistic logic that I don't understand very well, but one of the main features of it is that it has some sentences that are neither true nor false, but just unprovable. Um, I don't like that. We have the same pants. Uh, uh, that's weird. Um, er, no, I said it wrong. The, the point is that, ah, I, I can't do it. Um, so uh, one point is just that there is this difference between these two locutions that both use the word if. <laughs> And um, th they don't mean exactly the same thing. It's not quite clear what the difference between them is. Um, and I think the best way to think about this horseshoe symbol, the conditional symbol in logic, is that it's a precise symbol that gets close to modeling the way we actually use the language if-then. 
but um, if if then is ambiguous in English, then it's not going to match on perfectly to this symbol in formal logic that's ex that's really precise. Couldn't that be if I were? So I think this one seems to me like it matches more closely onto the if I am. But like, I mean, c could you just say, all right, like the people who made this up could just say, all right, this means if I am, then I am. Or if. Um, so you could say, this means if I'm sitting, then I'm the king. If you say that, then you've tied the meaning of your special horseshoe symbol to the ordinary English if then. And the issue is that we're not totally clear what that means exactly, how to think about the meaning of if then. Another way to go is to say, I'm going to define the meaning purely by the truth table and say the, the horseshoe is just the symbol that takes you to these truth values from these ones. Um, it's a function, essentially. Um, uh, and that's the way that formal logicians have gone in developing um, this, this language of logic that we're using. Um, and then if you go that way, then the sort of imperfection in the system is the match between the horseshoe and the ordinary English if then. So I think it should be super clear that for the top two rows, it makes a lot of sense that this is what if then means. And for the bottom two rows, it's not quite as clear, but it's at least a decent model of how the ordinary English if then works. And this is just the symbol we're going to use in our language. There are different a languages. So, like a French translation will not perfectly go to an English translation. So you can't have. Um, you can, like I take Latin, right? And if they, there are some Latin sentences that don't make sense when you translate them into English. Like, I don't know, uh, something. That's right. Like they don't have an extra. I don't know. It would be like he runs, no but falls, right, but he runs, but he falls or something, as an example, we would say that. We say something else that they don't say, but, so we have to infer that into our language, because their right. language is different. Um, and it, it's exactly the same thing when you go between the language of logic mm -hmm. and ordinary English. Um, there are some sentences of English that are ambiguous. So there's no perfect translation to the language of logic because the language of logic is not going to be ambiguous. Um, and there's some sentences that uh, are perfectly clear in the language of logic, but we actually don't quite have a good way to express in English. There are some ways in which logic can be clearer and express more than English. Um, so we're about out of time. I think that's good for a day. Sorry. What are you apologizing for? Everything. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'm just you about done. Like like oh, we can do it. I don't know. It can be done. Okay, I got one more example for you. I got one more example for you. I mean, if you gotta go, get gone. But um, it was about war. I want to tell you about an example about war. Is it actually kind of like No. This is what I was going for. You want to hear? So, um, or sentences are supposed to be true whenever one or the other one is true, right? But here's a weird one. Um, uh, you can have a soup. What? Or a salad. You can have a super salad. You were looking at something on my head, and I was like, oh, So, according to the normal way we've talked about or, um, that should be true. Yeah, that should be true if you can have a soup and you can't have a salad, right? So, suppose we're out of soup, and you only, we've There's only got salad. People. There's two people, and you can have soup. You or salad. Great example. Good job. Yeah, so it should be that if one disjunct is true, you can have a salad, 
then it's true that you can have a soup or you can have a salad. But that seems wrong, right? Like, if all you can have is a salad, I shouldn't tell you you can have a soup or a salad. Right, so... But the English wouldn't say that. You wouldn't say, you don't have any soup, you can have a soup or a salad. So, um, it seems like what we really want to do is we want to say you can have a soup and you can have a salad. It's just that maybe you can't have both, you can only have one, but you can have this one and you can have that one as long as you don't have both. So it's really tricky how to how to think about the world. I thought the example, you can have like two people and you can have two people and you can have two people and salad or You guys both don't eat, I don't know. Hey look, you're here on time. What is that sign? Did you give it Oh, I don't know. Because the thing is, both meanings are true. You made it. Because people are trying to left ahead, and I can turn class, left ahead. Really. <laughs> <laughs> Here. Yeah. 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 So many people are like, yeah. 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 Yeah, well, here on time, kept to the So we like, we Yeah, hopefully I won't cry. Oh, 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 Everybody loses to the Patriots sometimes. It's sad, but it happens. See, it's part of life. Uh, Tom Brady was a strong for Hanshaw when he didn't get past, right? Yeah. I do.